Okay, it looks like our green dots are lighting up. I think we're good to go. No one's lot. No one's watching yet. Okay, where the hell are they at? <laughs> what the freak was that? That's my phone. Turn the vibrate off to you. Yes, or set it on the table behind you. I just put on mute all the way. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, let's and record. To the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert. It's your host, hello. Todd Eccles. That brought it up a little bit. And we are back once again into Saturday afternoon, and we are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. And joining me today is, we got to have a name for you. Oh. The Bearded Wonder. There, there you go. The Bearded Wonder. Uh, I do have a nickname from Stay on the Barbershop, though. Is that, can we, is it illegal? Is it legal? It's legal. What is it? Bathroom Paul. Ba- that's right. That's Bathroom Paul. It's Bathroom Paul. <laughs> All right. This is going to be an interesting show. Uh, so how you been, sir? Been good, good, good. Live- Enjoying the nice weather. Oh, absolutely! It's like freaking summertime it's, out there. It was nice. It was what eighty degrees today. I'm, I, I mowed the lawn yesterday. I'm going to fire up the sprinklers tomorrow, and yeah, and then it's going to be like forty degrees on Monday. Yeah, yeah, that's it's nice Idaho. and cold. That's Idaho. It is, but it's supposed to start moving up again. So, yeah, yeah. So that, so want to be too bad. We're we're good. So yeah, I appreciate you stepping in this evening. I didn't. I can do these shows myself, but it's more fun with other people. Yeah. No, I appreciate you inviting me. That's it should fun. be fun. Hopefully, I don't bring it down too much. Nah, you won't. You won't. So, I tell you what, I'm going to just go ahead and say right now, just like usual, I am running YouTube live, and so I'm not going to be like typing one handed and responding. But if you got something to say, um, go ahead and you can uh, put in a comment, and we will see it, and we will probably just respond this way instead of typing on the computer because I can't multitask. Yeah, right and now. I can't type. So, and let us know if you're listening. Let us know. We like to know who we're. Uh, well, we'd like to know who's listening. All four people who listen. Is there you got that many now? Four? Sometimes, yeah. Nice. So, sometimes nice. sometimes we get four people. Looks looks like we got one up there right now, right? Yeah, we don't know who it is. They'll respond. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Perfect. So we haven't done this segment for quite a little while, but what have you done this week? It's been second amendment related, sir. I've actually done quite a bit this week. You have, okay. I, I, yeah, I bought a new gun. Ooh, what'd you get? I bought that canic you talked about it the other day, the yes. TP9 uh, okay. Elite. Um, did some shooting. I came out here to your range, did some shooting. Yes. Um, what do you think? I, I love it. I love it. It's a great gun. It's a really nice gun. Your, your buddy let me shoot his and that's what sold me on the Cajun cowboy, the Cajun cowboy. Let me, let me shoot it. And that sold me on it. Yeah. That's, that's a good, that's a good gun. Yeah. So now, so let's, let's back up a little bit because (laughs) you came out a while back and this is, this is one of my low moments as an instructor. Okay. You came out and we can talk about uh, this. Okay. I'm, if you're if you're comfortable talking about I'm, it. I'm not ashamed. Okay. Because I don't I have still can't <laughs> figure this out. So you called me up and you said, Hey Todd, I, I need I really want to dial in my shooting. I and mean, that's what you said, right? I, I, I said this one particular gun I'm having problems with. I, I can't hit bullseye on it no matter what I do. Yeah. And you brought it out. And what was it? It was a PT. It was the Taurus PT 111. That was before the G2s. Correct. It was the PT. one. So it was even the crappiest model of the Taurus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was bought for just, you know, everyday carry yeah. when I on job sites and construction sure, sites sure. and stuff I mean, like that. They go bang. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, they go exactly. bang. They aren't the most fun things to shoot, but they go bang. Yes. Um. So... Yeah, you you like to shoot that a uh, little low and left, uh, quite a bit low and left. What it was about two and a half, three and inches low? You were here like, oh my gosh, you were here like three and a half hours. Yeah, we were here for a long time, and we could not. I could pick up the gun and be, shoot fine with yep. it. Yep, every and, time. And then you could pick up every other gun and shoot fine with it. Yep. You even that, the, even that little Glock that you had. Yeah, you pick up that gun and you just freaking <laughs> fall apart <laughs> every time. And I, I, 
Oh, that was frustrating because we we I, we did absolutely everything. Yes, you adjusted my grip, trigger we pull. We were banging on those sights, dude. Twack, yes, twack, twack. yes. The, something that you always preached. It is not the sights, and we even adjusted the sights. I could not figure. <laughs> I could not figure that stupid thing out. But since then, you have bought a better gun. Yes, yes. And I think we're gonna have a PT one eleven for sale sometime soon. I I've already offered it up. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody wants it, let me know. 50 bucks is yours. Yeah. Well, maybe not that cheap, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we can work something out. The sights have been freshly adjusted. Yes. Well, you got them centered back up, so they were good. Yeah. You were shooting bullseye with it after that. So That's insane, though. I, I, I don't know what you were doing wrong. I don't know. I went to bed for many a night afterwards, just laying there and just like, what the hell was Paul doing to yeah. that thing? It, and I don't know. I've, I've put hundreds and hundreds of rounds through that thing, and it's always shot just like that for me every single time. And so I've helped a lot of people shoot, right? Uh -huh. And you were doing everything. You were doing everything that I was doing, right? Yeah. I, I don't, I have no idea. At least pretty close. I, I have no idea. Yeah, I but don't. But then you picked up every one of my firearms and every other one of your firearms yep. and you were no problems. Yep. I, maybe just the way it fits in my hand. Freaking, I don't know. Freaking Tauruses. Yeah. Freaking Tauruses. But like Todd said, if anybody wants it, just give him a call. We'll get it worked out. That's right. We only <laughs> hit it with a hammer a couple times. It's still good to go. Yeah. I think, what, three times? Three times. Three times. Yeah. And we, yeah. yeah. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's all good. It's, <laughs> it's all, Yeah. It's a Taurus. It's a Taurus. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> so uh, you bought that new gun. I did. And, uh, you know, I want to talk about this for a minute because this has been a, a trend. A trend. And uh, people are going to get tired of me talking about. It's your fault this is a trend, though, I know. by the way. People are going to be tired of me talking about red dots. I talk about red dots quite a bit now because they weren't for me at first. Uh -huh. right? I, I had to be proven, but I, you know, I've talked about this before. I'll, I'll humble myself, right? I'll learn. Yeah. I'll learn where I need to learn. And uh, so now you're going to put a red dot on this thing. I, I have been looking for a red dot for it. I have got like pictures from like two or three people this week that listen to this podcast, and they send me, I got this firearm. I put a red <laughs> dot on it. I, 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 it. But they all had plates for theirs, right? Yes, they did. Yeah, I didn't okay. have plates for mine. I do now. <laughs> so I, as a guy that listens to, to the uh, podcast, uh, uh, Alex, he he sent me a picture today. He's got one on his new Walther PDP, mm -hmm. and that looks pretty slick with a red dot on it. Yeah. It really does. Yep. And I almost bought the version that had, came with the Vortex on it, but after doing a little research, I decided I wanted to put my own on it, and that's so why I went with that model. what kind do you think you're going to get? I'm really leaning towards the, the hollow sun. The hollow sun. Now, yeah. Cause you uh, shot mine today. I did. I shot it today That's and, pretty, and I really liked it. It's pretty slick, isn't it? It is. You can pick those up for typically right around 300 bucks. Yep. And that's what I saw today while I was out looking around. Was so about 300 bucks. you now have a Taurus PT 111, $300. <laughs> 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 or trade for a holos or, or trade for a holos and there you go <laughs> that was my thought you know that's a little bit of money there yeah yeah so that'll be slick red dots they're they're the way to go yeah i the more i research it the more i'm like well why why wouldn't you it's it's the way to go it's it's efficient it is it's efficient it, it is. really is and so i you know and more red dot talk, you know it's gonna be red dot talk with yeah. patriot defense there you go every freaking week now right so I was gonna get some. Um, I was gonna get some uh, uh, suppressor height sights for mine, and I've decided not to. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm just. I don't think I'm going to because, in all honesty, in a in a in a scenario, even my red dot goes down if it's self defense, and that's mm -hmm. really what I'm into. Is you know self defense. Yep. I'm gonna be up close to personal. Yep. I don't think I'm gonna have a problem hitting where I'm aiming. I, I mean, honestly, if you're in a self defense situation, are you gonna be looking for the red dot anyways? It's it's gonna be more instinct point and shoot it, it type, of, type of stuff. It is. I don't think I need I don't think I need those signs. Yeah. And I, I I know you read some articles and I've been talking to some people and reading some articles and they talk about how people are always like co-witness that red dot with the suppressor height sights. Yeah. You know, that makes it so all your I think in my mind is all you're looking for is the suppressor height sights. You're still focusing on, you're still on focusing sights. on your sights. You're not focusing on trying to find the red dot. Yep. Right. So if you're going to shoot a red dot, if you can shoot a red dot, yep. right. You need to focus on the target, place a red dot on top of the target. You've got sights there. You're still lining the freaking sights. Yeah. Out. You're so just, what's the point? Yeah. Why waste the money? You got a $300 paperweight. Yep. Exactly. It's not, that might make your VP nine not cycle. Right. Yeah. I think that's me. I'm <laughs> We won't get into that. Okay. We you know, it's, it's a bad day for okay. Todd. It's, a, it's been a bad weekend, right? <laughs> I just spend a lot of time with family. Yeah. It's, tis, the, tis the season, right? The healthy eater has eaten just a tad bit too much chocolate today. <laughs> oh, you actually had chocolate today? I, uh, shut up. Yes. When you said you ate bad, I didn't realize you were actually eating yeah, chocolate. Yeah, well, I, had cho I like chocolate. Uh, and I, there's some little chocolate. There's 
my mom filled the kids' eggs freaking dove chocolate oh and that's good stuff too. that's good stuff was it dove dark chocolate i wish oh so she oh she went with the good she stuff went, milk she, chocolate no dark chocolate's the best she went cheap uh, <laughs> she got the crappy dove <laughs> <laughs> she got the shitty dove the, yeah the stuff that's yeah uh, <laughs> but no so i yeah anyhow rough weekend yeah i'm feeling it now i need you'll feel better tomorrow when you go for this your run machine that i have created, finally tuned Finely tuned, finely tuned, my <laughs> finely tuned machine rejects chocolate now. Yeah, I'm all about lettuce. Yeah, me too. Can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so I got to pull out. I got to pull out the freaking list here. Let's see. Uh, what do we want to talk about? Let's talk about this right here. Hang on, I pull up my list here. I, I was too lazy to write everything down or print anything off. Well, that's why we have smartphones now. Yeah, exactly. So um, let's talk about this shooter over in Boulder, Colorado. Okay, there was this actual article that came out, and I don't like this article, right? Yeah. It, it says an FBI so corrupt it lets mass shooters rampage. It lets lets them rampage. It, it lets them get off. It doesn't. They aren't doing their job, yep. right? And it goes down the list. It says the New York Times reported on March 27th that the Syrian-born Colorado mass shooter. Ahmed Ali Ali well, what Ali Baba whatever yeah had been on the FBI's <laughs> radar before he murdered ten people in a grocery store yeah he was on the FBI radar he was on a watch list yeah yep. says the suspect's identity was previously known to the FBI because he was linked to another individual under investigation by the bureau according to law enforcement officials six days before Alyssa shot ten people to death he purchased a pistol that would have required him to pass a federal background check also. Ran by the FBI. Ran by the FBI. It seems that the FBI is not very good at this uh, stopping mass shooters thing. So, no. and and it goes down. I'm not going to read you the whole. There was article. what seven or eight different yeah. instances. So, for example, there's many other mass shooters, right, that were uh, on the radar of the FBI. We yep. have the Fort Hood shooter. We have the Boston Marathon bombers. We have the Pulse nightclub shooter. Okay, we some of them had even been interviewed by the FBI multiple times. Multiple times. Multiple times. Um. Is he had been warned numerous FBI had also been warned numerous times about the Parkland, Florida school shooter. Okay, that was a guy that killed 17 and injured 17 more. Yep. Um, they also knew beforehand about the uh, 2018 Nashville, Tennessee Waffle House shooter mm -hmm. and the 2020 Nashville RV bomber. Are you freaking kidding me? Knew about the bomber. And, and he still was able all, to do it. Knew about all those people. And and you hear him talking about now how they want to strengthen background checks. Yeah. They want to do this. They want to do mental health. And I'm going to sound crazy again. This I, I, Did you listen to the last show? I did. I'm going to sound freaking crazy again because here's all these people. Okay. They've been interviewed by the FBI. The FBI knew about them. They've had run-ins with the FBI. But they were still able to go and buy firearms. Yep. Man, it seems like someone wanted this to happen. Yep. Right before all the gun control pushes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you got these guys that are like this. You got these guys that are mentally unstable. You got these guys that are on freaking weird medications, right? They've been in and out of mental institutes. They've been visited by the FBI. Yep. So the FBI knows them inside and out. They've been interviewed by the FBI. And, uh, and we're they, gonna, I'm going to go back and say this is some MK Ultra shit going on. Yeah. Here. I mean, I'm, and if you don't know what MK Ultra is, look, look it up. It up. Um, but it's crazy. It it's, is. It's like they've groomed. It's almost like they've groomed these people. Yep. Like they've created, they've created, they want this to happen yeah. and they just release them into the freaking public. You yeah. know, I don't know what they do. Here's some crack. I don't know. Let's do this. They do let's up the medication. Hey, if you even make a bad joke about getting on an airplane, you get banned and they keep you off there. Yeah. You're on an FBI watch list and you can still go and out and buy your guns buy and a gun. rifle. Yeah. And you still want to, and you want to strengthen. But how about we enforce the laws that we have? How about we do our job? Yes. How about we do our job FBI? Just if you, if, if you enforce laws that are already on the books, we'd, we'd accomplish what they want. How about doing some? Yeah. How about, how about, you know, issuing, you know, actually falling through with punishments. I mean, oh, yeah. so, so you've got the, the, the Boston marathon bombers. I think they're still like going through court cases. Yes, yes, they are. I mean, how long ago was that? That's was what two thousand eighteen. Like, was it eighteen? Uh, no, I think it was. Uh, and I got to pull it back up again. Let's see. I want to find this. Uh, two thousand thirteen. Thirteen killed Gosh. three, injured two hundred and sixty four. Okay, they're still. I think they're still going through trial. Yeah, they should be freaking dead by now. Yeah, they should already have sentenced and. <laughs> 
exhausting their appeals. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, you get caught selling a little bit of weed, you'll be in. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You'll, you'll be, you'll be, here's the book. You're done. You're gone in like yeah. a week. Idaho will lock you up for that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, this is this is absolutely crazy to me. I mean, you can't tell me that this wasn't set up. There's just too much of the points to it. Yes, and I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but I agree with you. I think that I am not either publicly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. There, it sounds like there's definitely some grooming going on because oh, there it's, has to be. It's, it, it happens every time that they start pushing for gun control. All of a sudden, there's all these mass shootings, or we're having this problem, we're having that yeah. problem, and and it just always coincides when they're trying to get new gun control passed. Oh, and, and, you know, and I tell you what, talk about talk about mixed messages. <laughs> we're going to talk about this. Talk about mixed messages here. Let me pull this other article that we got. So um, it's funny because you have that kind of stuff happen, but then you got another article that came up, comes out. It was written by Emily Miller. Um, she, it follow her on Facebook, follow her on Twitter or, or Instagram. She does some pretty cool stuff. She's a, like a reporter and stuff. And, and she does great gun fire, you know, articles and she's constantly get hate mail. So of course you gotta, oh, like, yeah. you gotta like her. Um, uh, it says Biden is a better gun salesman than Obama. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I was looking at the stats here. This just came out on April 2nd. So a couple of days ago, yep. um, it says, uh, Joe Biden has not been yet been president for a hundred days, but he's already proven to be a better gun salesman than president Obama. Gun sales in the first quarter of 2021 are the highest first quarter on record. On record. On record. By what was it, like 300,000 or something like that? Yeah, sales in March were through the roof with over 2 million background checks. And that's that's just, that's just background checks. So yes. They, they could be buying multiple Multiples. firearms yep. with one background check if they do it all at the same time. Okay. It's the second highest month in history, except for March of last year when the U.S. was under lockdown. Yep. I mean, as soon as he says we, we need to call for more gun control, what? I went out and bought a new gun. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, people took their money and they went out. I, I bought. Well, I didn't buy a gun. I bought stuff for my scout. But, yeah. Um, it, it's it's amazing to me. So they want to stop them. They got I'm going to call plants people to go in and do all these mm -hmm. things. But yet they're they're causing guns to be sold by the freaking yeah. truckloads. So what does that tell you that? People, people don't want the gun control. There's obviously more of us out there that, yeah. that and they, are smart enough to realize that the stuff that yeah. they're doing isn't working anyways. And they've got to work extra hard by yeah. creating yep. uh, disturbances. In yep, the, that's a good word for it. Disturbances in the force, <laughs> yeah. right? To prove that they need to come in and do something. It's it's absolutely just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, fa it's fascinating to me. So we're going to go on this article here. Um the gun industry predicts that sales will continue to stay at these heightened levels in coming months while Democrats and Congress and the White House threaten to pass gun control laws. It says Americans will keep buying guns while they fear uh, President Biden takes executive actions and the Senate takes up gun control laws like later this spring. Um, there you go. I mean, I it's. Well, and I think in that same article, insane. it says that they don't think that they get they've got enough Democratic votes to actually be able to get anything passed. Honestly. I think you're right. Yeah. I don't think they do. I, I don't think that, that, that they do. I'm going to find my notes here. They're, they're going after Very Republicans organized. because they, they don't have enough Democratic votes. Yeah, they to don't. Be able to get it passed. I don't think they do. So here you, so here's some questions, okay? We've got some questions. I'm going to go over the questions, state what they are. Sorry, man. It's not COVID. Yeah, allergies. allergies. is insane right now. Um, so here's some questions, and then we're going to come back. We'll, we'll revisit these one at a time. So the question is, are they really coming after your guns? Okay. Uh, why haven't they done it yet? Okay. If President Biden can issue an executive order to take your guns, why hasn't he done that yet? Okay. Wouldn't that be the first thing that he would do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, he likes to tout that he's done it before. I'm the one that instituted the assault weapons ban of whatever, and that he'll do it again. Then why freaking hasn't he? You know why that the, the assault weapons ban, actually why it ended? Because the FBI recommended letting it go because yeah, it wasn't doing anything. Because it wasn't it wasn't stopping anything. It didn't stop anything. And so so let, let's revisit this. Are they really coming after your guns? I think they want to. They want to. Can they? Can they? I don't know that they can. Well, what's he going to do? Sign sign into executive order that no knock warrants after they touted what was that lady's name that oh. got killed because the cops busted in on the wrong apartment with yeah. a no knock warrant. Yeah, I, I don't think. They, they want to, but I think they're struggling. They're struggling oh, yeah. for the support. I think they thought the support would be a lot more, and I think they uh, can see that the American people don't want any part of it. Well, I mean, how many how many you know so-called liberals, Democrats, do you get in your classes now? 
You, a lot. Yeah. I get a lot. And and I've actually joined some liber- it's called liberal firearms uh, owners pages yeah. on Facebook and stuff. And they, yeah, it's Brianna Taylor. There we go. Um, hey, that's the guy with the new Walter PDP and the red dot. Oh, there nice. Um, so they, uh, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Liberal gun groups. Yeah. So I've been on these liberal gun groups. I want to see what's going on, on the other side. They feel the same way. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a good portion of liberal gun owners that are like, uh-uh, not going to do it. We don't want this gun control. They don't have the undying you know, support that they, that they think that they think they do. Well, because most people are rational people and they understand right. what it's really about. Well, I think that more people are seeing that it's not a good thing, right? I mean, oh, yes. the second amendment was there to protect all the rest of them, protect, uh, you know, to, to be, so we can protect ourselves against the upright of like a tyrannical government. Mm-hmm. Right. And they want the firearms, but I do think that there's some stuff coming down that it's going to come down later on this year, later on the summer, because They've got the um, they've got the National Guard and the fence is still around absolutely everything in Washington and they just extended their stay for even longer. Why would they do that? Yeah, well, because they know that they're getting ready to do some stuff that nobody's going to like. Exactly, exactly. It's yeah. in fact today. Did you see today that some dude over in Washington rammed a car into somebody? Yeah, and, yeah, and then jumped out and killed an officer with a knife. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and uh, just I don't know. It's not. Uh, Okay, sweet. YouTube live is working. That's thanks good. For, thanks for joining us, Jim. Thanks for for joining us, Alex. Um, I, I promise I'd respond to these as they come up because I'm not <laughs> typing today. Yeah, I, I got my phone in one hand. That's yeah. my typing. And he's hand. got a handicap over here too. So, <laughs> but it's just it's amazing. So he likes to talk about doing an executive order. Yes. Okay. If you say you're going to do an executive order, first of all, my question is if you. He threatened it all through his his election, all through his campaign, mm-hmm. right? Why wouldn't you do it the first day? That like he, how many did he sign in? Because because they're really not enforceable, right? They're, they're not really they they're yeah, they're not really enforceable. It's just a guidance saying, hey, this is what we want you to do. And I mean, now he talks about it. We'll do it right away. I think that it's just like we've repeated so many times. They want you to see this over here. Yep. They don't want you to see what they're doing over here. Yeah. And, um, you know, James is probably not on, or we call him Magnum. Magnum. Um, he's really good at following a lot of these. I get the freaking numbers all confused. And he'll tell you that they're doing this over here. They don't want you to see. It's the little things that you need to look at. Not oh, yeah. not the big wild bills that, that, that are just mind blowing. Like, oh, they can't do that. That's an insane, that's an insane gun bill. That's, that they want you to focus on that because all they're doing is they're taking a handful of wet spaghetti noodles. They're throwing them to the wall. Yep. If the big one sticks, great, but they don't plan on it sticking because they want you to look at that. Yep. They want you to YouTube about that, not these other ones over here. Well, they got their hand under the table doing something sneaky. Yeah, and if I was a really good podcast, I'd have that bill number up and I'd show you what they're <laughs> doing in the, le- in, in the other hand. But uh, I'm not that great, I guess. This is for fun. It is for fun. But it's it's, I don't know, it's... It's not that I don't believe that they want to do this, and they may get something done. They'll, I think they'll get something done. I don't think it's going to be as extreme as what they think or what they want. I get people calling me, people that's taking classes. I've had people that listen to the podcast get a hold of me, and they go, you know, they hit me up and they go, "What do you think about all this? What you don't seem that worried?" And I'm like, "Well, I am worried, but I don't want to get super excited. They want you to get excited yep. about it. Sit back, pay attention." And let's see what happens. Just be ready. Just be ready. Because, you know, you can make phone calls and you can be politically active. And I think everyone mm-hmm. should. And I think they need to focus on the local stuff, especially, right? Oh, if yeah, you go to affect, those meetings. and You can affect the local stuff. You can affect the state stuff. And then at the state level, that'll affect the, 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 federal, the federal stuff, yep. right? I can't. Because I, I see Joe Biden come out and say that I'm going to, you know, do an executive order to take away your guns. Me get pissed and yelling, TV, TV is not going to do anything. No, because we can't change an executive order. Essentially, they're going to do whatever they want to do. And yeah. I think everyone should take, and I, I may have to do a podcast in a couple of weeks and just kind of redact all this stuff. Who knows? But my feelings, my thought, my gut instinct says if he was going to do an executive order, he if he could do it, or he was going to do on it already be freaking done. I mean, I think so too. Don't get worked up over it. Nope. I, uh, it's, it, it's either going to happen or it's not, but at this point right. there's not enough backing in the, in the government. There's, well, they're not going to get it through the Senate. They're not going to get it through the house. Well, it's, he could say that he's going to do it. And then he could, two hours later, he could sign one in. Yeah. 
it's been since he said that what's been like two weeks now. two weeks now right yep and notice it kind of stuff dies off and then he'll get out and say something crazy like that like don't look at what's going on on the border <laughs> yeah but pay attention to this gun oh bill. yeah oh get, uh, do you I, want to start talking about the border? no I okay don't, not on this show <laughs> that's that's uh that's a that my friend is a um uh, forgotten American forgotten. podcast episode. That if if you do listen to podcasts, he's not on YouTube, but our our own Tarver, our own Cajun Cowboy, does the Forgotten America. It's not the. It's called he, just he forgotten. Corrects, it's called Forgotten American. Yes. yes, you can look him up on Spotify. He's on he's on uh, iTunes. All that stuff. Go ahead and check that out because this it's stuff fun, like this is what he covers. It's a fun podcast. I like it. It's a great podcast. It it I listen to it when I'm running. And then I have halfway through, I have to stop listening to music because it's just like, oh, overload. <laughs> uh, but man, we're really buzzing through the topics quick today. Paul, you're a good co host over yeah. there. Oh, well, I, I guess I can try. You're pretend, good. pretend like I'm not an anchor. You're good. So, so here's something I talked about last time. Okay. Is, um, my women's class. I always talk about my women's class. This is the one they I put on the freaking chin guards, and I put a video up on my Facebook page, and which was great. They, her just kicking the crap out of you. They kicked the tr- trash out of me. I kept having to tell them, "I'm a freaking runner. Don't hurt my legs." <laughs> and anyhow, we did. We finished up the uh, open hand combat, so they get a shoot next week. So they're actually getting actually get shoot in two weeks. They're really looking forward to that. I think they're getting ready to, to uh, declare mutiny. Oh, if they don't, they're, shoot they're going to storm the White House. They, they are, yeah, they, they want to shoot. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I talked about it a little bit, but uh, I, the the amount of women I have signing up for classes is just freaking is great. It's freaking phenomenal this year. I have so many. That's good. And no, it is. That's good that they're taking their personal safety in the in their own hands. Oh, it is. It's great. My question is. is where are all the men? It's vanity. Is it vanity? Is I it, think it's is vanity. It machismo? I think so. Yeah. It's it's hard for a lot of guys to just be like, well, I'm going to go to this guy. You know, I've been shooting for 10, 10 15 years. Right. But I'm going to go to an instructor and have him show me how to shoot. You know, it, it right. it's, it's, a, I think it's some of it has to do with that. What'd you call it? Machismo? Machismo. Yeah. Machismo. I, I think some of it has to do with that. Macho. Yeah. My chest out. I'm Superman. No, it's, I don't know. I, you know, everyone's got enough ammo. I mean, there's ammo. I mean, there, there is. There are people, or there's enough people hoarding ammo. There's a lot of people. Oh, yeah. A lot of freaking ammo out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was at the gun show in Filer this weekend, and there was tons of ammo if you wanted to pay for it. And there's people that pay for it. Oh, there was. It was walking out the door like crazy. Yeah. So I don't know. It's it's very interesting to me that there's way way more women signing up than than men right now. It's 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 just like a reversal. It's I, I love it. I think I I do. I think it's it's hard for some guys just to be like I uh, I need to go get some instruction. I need some help, and and that's tough for guys. So and I've talked about this before on the podcast as well. But you know, I went to that class. I keep talking about that. I went to that class down in Arizona. I learned lots, right? And you were here the other day, just just using the range, and we yep. got to talk. And your friend and you know, like like Paul, let me tweak, let me tweak this. Let's let's try this. Yeah. That's pretty cool shit, isn't it? It's really, really cool. Just just the difference in yeah. changing up my grip and and watching that sight picture come back in just real quick and being able to acquire it. I mean, so we're essentially taking what I'm gonna call the NRA way of doing things, which you're still doing it, right? You still yeah, have that it's still, still the have basics. The stance, you still have the fundamentals, right? Which is not a bad way to shoot. And then we're just essentially we're just tweaking. You tweaked it. We tweaked your what do we tweak? We tweaked your stance. Tweak my stance. Your feet. You're not rigid. Yep. Shoulders. I'll shut up. Let you go. Uh, it was it was shoulders. The answer for grip. You. <laughs> um, got that left wrist up a little bit higher than the right wrist, which I I mean I don't know if that's the way everybody shoots, but I shoot with my left hand a little bit lower than my right hand. Right. Right. Um, getting my shoulders instead of having that rolled forward shoulder, it was kind of more of a relaxed. What we call this uh, Superman chest. Superman chest. Superman man. chest. Superman chest. Um, more rigid. The 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 one that was probably the hardest for me was tightening that grip with your strong hand the crab claw yeah the, the nutcracker so yep. we called it right it, yeah that was that was probably the weird one because it's weird to put that much strength into that grip yeah because that's not what you're used to no it's not what you but man it makes a huge oh difference. it did it really did and it, but it, and it almost to a certain extent goes you have to know the basics right because you're not you're changing stuff but you're not changing stuff you're just tweaking stuff but it's some of that stuff goes against everything. It goes against, absolutely against everything you thought you knew. Yes. And it, it tires you out faster. 
Yeah, it does. Until you get used. I got to imagine that yeah. unless you unless you're going to do it a lot, it tires you out a lot faster. Oh, very, yeah, very much so. I mean, it's just so. Yeah, there's always something to learn. Oh yeah, there's always. I you know I went around. I was thinking this is. I know this stuff. I'm good. You're right. I could shoot okay. And then they tweak this. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, and it's just enough that it makes you think. Oh wow, wow, that's a little bit different. It's yeah, and you really got to think about it. But once you know, once I can see, once you practice it, oh, it yeah. just becoming real natural for you. Yeah. Now I need more ammo. Yep. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> more ammo to to practice. You come yeah. over and I'll use yours. Okay. I. <laughs> It's going to be the stuff that I take from here tonight when I sneak no, out. Oh, gosh. No. I need to, <laughs> Some I of those need, reloads. I need to hide that stuff. That's what I need to do. Uh, but so I'm thinking about, and I'm going to like leak it here. I leak stuff on the podcast. Yes, right? you do. I, probably more than I should. Ah, that's good for I your business. Know. So I'm thinking about putting together some, some stuff. Some stuff. And I'm going to call it. Patriot defense after dark or Patriot defense behind closed after dark. <laughs> so, so there's, there, so, so I got that confused. You want to know why I got that confused? Cause, cause one of my other, one of my other favorite podcasts is trailer, uh, trailer park, trailer boy, uh, trailer park boys, trailer park boys, <laughs> trailer park after dark. Anyhow, if you don't know the trailer park boys, you got to check that out. That's a great podcast, but no, uh, Patriot defense behind closed doors. Right. Uh, me and, uh, James, He's been helping me uh, do some stuff with the women's classes, and we've been kind of discussing this whole idea of a set of classes, uh, Patriot Defense Behind Closed Doors, where we go, we dive deeper, right? We talk about the little tweaks that you can do on your stance, your grip. We talk about uh, the human body and where to place shots and why you place them there, right? It's it's good to know what to do, but then it's good to understand the science behind it yeah. as well and the, and the why. I guess the why. And, and that's, that's, I think everyone gets to a certain level, they know what to do and then the why. And that's kind of what we'll, we'll work. That's what I'm working on. Yeah. So, when we talked about it earlier, it sounds, in, it sounded interesting. It's, it's one that I would like. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, yeah. I don't know. I need to, I need to get together. Freaking summer is here. It, it is. Summer is here, man. Yep. And if we don't start planning this stuff now, my schedule will be full. Yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, you can make, you can freaking make time. That's what I'm saying. That's right. Okay, so I put up a post on my Patriot Defense Facebook page, and it was uh, Delaware. Uh, Delaware, I don't have the article in front of me. I got my post in front of me. It says, a Delaware Senate approves gun permit requirements and high capacity uh, magazine ban. And they are going to, they want to, they talked about like requiring, like if you are going to actually have a gun yep. in that state, requiring, flat out requiring training. Training prior to purchase, right? Yes. And so, you know, people look at me, I'm an instructor and people go, well, that's it. That something like that, if that were to happen here, that'd be a good moneymaker for you. Right. It would, it would, but you know what people, people, I, people look at me funny when I say that uh, even though I'm a firearms instructor, I hate it when the idea of mandatory training is like thrown around. Yep. I don't like that. Right. For business, from a business standpoint, that'd be freaking fantastic. Right. But you know what? It's, from the libertarian point of view. From the libertarian point of view, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a God-given right. Mm -hmm. Self-defense, I, I can have a firearm, right? I feel that the weight of responsibility that carrying a firearm should convey onto a person, that it should, it should be enough to cause them to actually seek out the training for themselves, right? The, the firearms world, the firearms community should, I don't want to say shame people into training, but they should really encourage that. Mm -hmm. Instead... We have a, at least for Patriot Defense right now, I'm seeing a, lots of women, right, are wanting to get drained. And honestly, in Idaho, we have constitutional carry. They don't have to take any classes, but they're feeling the weight of that. They're coming to me, right? You got all these men that, these guys that they can carry and they can do so without training. And so that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I think that they need to understand the responsibility of carrying a firearm. They should seek out that training, whether they're going to get a permit or not. And You've I got agree. to look for their you got to be safe for yourself. you got to be safe for your family. You need some of that training for the safety of those around you when you're in the Walmart or the Winco oh, yeah. or the wherever you, Walgreens, all the W places. Yeah, <laughs> all the big Ws. <laughs> well, and, and those same guys that aren't getting any training are probably the same guys that are carrying ball ammo oh, and their pistols that are just going to blow through everything and don't with no regard to what's behind their target. And, yeah, I mean, you... 
I would love to, everyone to take a class and because to be make my business great, but I want people to be able to just do it because they want to do it, not to be required of them. Yes. Because that is, that's absolutely just not the way the less government involvement, the better. I, I struggle with anything the government tells me I have to do. My wife tells me that my biggest problem is I struggle with anything anyone tells me I have to yeah. do. And as soon as I'm told I have to do something, that's bullshit. I'm not doing that. Yeah, and I'm the same way. That's I was trying to broaden it out, though, so I didn't sound like quite the jerk. Oh, I'm a jerk. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big jerk. If I'm told what to do, I will immediately say, up. Uh, yeah. Make me. Make me. Yeah, make me. <laughs> make me. <laughs> Add a little more tax to it or something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But uh, so, yeah, if you're in the firearms community, you need to encourage those around you who carry firearms to to take a class, a safety class, a basic class. I mean, some of the stuff I've seen and I've talked about it before. I mean, I've been I've been in town shopping with my wife and I've seen people open carrying a firearm, which I'm not against open carry. It's not my favorite. OK, uh, I, I, I saw an awful one today and I couldn't quit, get a picture fast. What enough. was it? What did you see? This this guy had this real fancy tactical. Was it, open, was it a drop? Leg? It was it was a drop Sweet. leg. Yes. And he had was uh, it nylon. <laughs> No, it wasn't nylon. It was actually Kydex, but Whoa. but he had this little subcompact pistol that was in there that barely stuck out of it, and I, I just couldn't get a picture of it. He in just time. like he's like it didn't even snap. It just dropped. It, in that's there. what it looked like. Is it just dropped in there like it didn't snap in place or anything? Sweet. Oh, it was awful. Sweet. It was awful. I I've seen one before where a guy was actually open carrying and he he didn't have a mag in, which whatever I guess I don't agree with it. No magazine was in. The slide was locked back and it was in his holster. <laughs> Well, that's for so he could slam that mag in and just release it and it's ready to go. Yeah, that only takes 10 seconds. But he probably had one of those Uncle Mike's holsters where the mag was in the front of the holster there. Is that <laughs> yeah, where it was yeah. at? I love I love those where <laughs> where you're a right-handed shooter and you got the mag pouch on the holster. Yep. So if you have to do a mag change, you got to reach around and try to grab <laughs> that sucker and slam it into place, you know, tap rack bang. Yeah. It's I don't know. It I, some of the stuff I see, some uh, of the stuff I hear. Oh yeah. I've sent you pictures. Yeah. I, I've sent Pe you pictures that I get from all over the place. People need education. Yeah, They really do. And they think they don't, but they, I guarantee you the stuff they hear on the internet's not real. Oh no. And I'm, you know, I'm just as guilty as some of these people though. I mean, oh, we've, how all, much, we've all done stuff. How much, well that, and I mean, how much training do I, you know, come out and get really also, you right. know, instruction, actual instruction, stuff like that. Um, I, I make a habit of going out and shooting as often sure. as possible. And if I do have questions, we come out and you, you don't fix it for me, but we <laughs> get, get, a, get a gun. <laughs> that was the one time you came out. I tried to make up for it last night. You did. You did. <laughs> but it's, it's, I don't know, man, the, the, the things I see, the people that need people that need instructions, and uh, Alex jumped up here and said, in his experience, women are more open to retaining instructions than educational firearms than most. But they very well, oh, they very much are. And I enjoy having women come out and take classes because they actually will listen. They put it into play. They think about it. They, 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 they break it down. And you can see their brains going through it. And they, well, they're willing to, 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 to do that. They pay attention. Well, right? I mean, it's not just in the in firearms industry either. But women tend to take instruction better than men do anywhere, do. You, anywhere that you're, you go to. You know, you do have to know how to actually uh, be an instructor for women though. They oh. are, it's a lot, it's a lot, it can be a lot, it can be a lot different than actually teaching a man. Yeah. Cause teaching to me, man. to me, you can come over and go, Hey, look, look, idiot. This is what you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, it's just a lot different. They learn a little different. You, and they want you to um, uh, women tend to have the why question. They, they, you will teach them something and they want to know why, 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 why do I need, and, and you, you better have a freaking answer and a good answer. You better have an answer and it better be a good answer. A good answer. Cause they're going to put it into place once they get that why answer. Yeah. But they want to know why. And they have the best, the best questions. I'd actually like to come sit in one of those classes and just listen. They're to great, them. man. And they have, they know how to have freaking fun. Well, yeah. I mean, they laugh and they have their friends with everyone already. It's freaking great. Whereas the guys probably, you know, just sitting there they, and just stare at each other. They view each other as competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm going to outdo this guy. I'm going to go out there and run my teacup stance and my <laughs> tea, my teacup grip. And uh, I'm going to I'm gonna beat all these sorry SOBs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the teacup. The te yeah. I see enough people show up to class that pick up a semi-auto and put their thumb back behind the slide that I'm just like, 
everybody needs instruction. Yeah. Everybody needs help. I'm like a little bit of slide bite to teach here, them. So here's my question. So everyone says, Oh, I've been shooting for 30. I'm not picking on everyone today. I kind of am, but it, we are, um, I've been shooting for 30 or 40 years, 30 or 40 years. So I always ask him at the beginning of class. Hey, tell me about yourself. How long you've been shooting? Maybe you haven't shot. Maybe you've been shooting for a while. What kind of gun did you bring? Have you shot it? Kind of so I know where to position them when we go out to the shoot on the shooting line. Right? Yeah. On the shooting line, the firing line. <laughs> Jesus, we're going to shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they don't get the, right. the firing line. And I, oh, I've been shooting for 30 years. And okay, great. Perfect. And I this gun that you brought, have you shot it? Yep. I've been, I've been shooting it. And then I go out and watch them like almost take their thumb off with the freaking uh, slide. And I'm like, have you been really lucky for 30 years? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, well, because I, I mean, yeah, but the, it goes back to that machismo thing that right. you probably don't get the women saying, oh, yeah, I've been shooting for 30 years. It's all the guys. Oh, yeah, I've been shooting for 30 years. I don't need this instruction. I'll be fine. Yeah, we it just, goes back we to just that. sign my permit paper. Yeah, exactly. Get me out of here. And then you go over to the law portion of it and they're like. I shoot to kill. Yeah. No, you don't shoot to kill. Yeah. You shoot to stop the threat. Yeah, stop the threat. Don't. Yeah, I'm going to shoot him in the head. No, 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 no. no. Down. Uh-huh. Right. We, we go slow. And then the second we speed it up. And then sometimes for fun, I'm like, we do seven round drills. I'm like, okay, seven rounds. Keep it on target. Let's have a little fun here, right? Let's speed it up a little bit. And I always, um, you know, go to your, you know, shoot at your speed of success, right? Go to your speed of success, right? If, and right. I see these guys. Bah, 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 bah. I was gonna say, I see where this is going. And they're hitting the paper, and they're not just throwing random bullets out. I mean, they're hitting their their cardboard and their target, but they are all over the freaking yeah, oh, place. Yeah. And I'm like, I said, go to your speed of success. <laughs> go, that's not you weren't successful. Well, if we're hitting center mass, you success, were successful right? at firing seven rounds quickly. <laughs> but it's all about, but but on target. D- yeah. d- uh, some of them not yeah, so much. Exactly. Right? And it's and then you got the guy that shoots the stick. If any of the if anyone anyone is taking one of my classes is watching and they they think it's fun to shoot the the, the sticks the uprights that hold the targets in place. Yeah, that's super fun. <laughs> Todd enjoys that a lot too. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit of extra work after class. If I see you do that on purpose now, uh, you guess who's just going to shoot the pile of dirt the rest of the class? Did you have somebody do that on purpose? Oh, they do, and it's fun, and uh, I laugh. It's okay, but I mean. A few and every now and then is okay. Yeah, I don't want it done all the time. Yeah, because then I'm just like freaking hell. Now you gotta, I, I gotta hold up class. Yeah, I gotta call cold range, clear the guns. Everyone step away from the table. Yep. I've got to run in. Got to get an upright. I've got to pull everything off. Go out there. If they break it off too low, I got to get a freaking pair of pliers to pull it out oh, of the man. hole. Put it in place. Staple it. I'm just like really. Yep. And with Idaho weather the way it is, it's either rain and snow under 100 degrees. I got enough problem with wind breaking those oh, than, yeah. than, than someone shooting them. And I know it happens on accident. Some of them are just aim for them. I'm like, you just need to get more of those metal hostage targets and just let them shoot those. Ooh, not at 100. I got a good deal on those, but at 125 dollars a piece, no, I don't think so. Is that really what they are? Yeah, it's just a lot of steel, man. Oh, man. It's a lot of steel. That's like freaking AR 500 or something. Oh, okay. So, uh, hey, James Magnum joined us. He says, what's up? We're doing a podcast, sir. <laughs> is that, is <laughs> that, that what we're doing? Yeah, I, th- I think so. I, we're struggling because I think we might have run out of topics because Todd wasn't real prepared today. He was too busy eating chocolate. Um, so what else we got to talk about here? Are you letting the girls use the simulator? They, you, they have not used it yet. Stick shooting is great. Yeah, stick shooting is <laughs> awesome. No, the women have now not, I know who's guilty of doing it. Yeah, yeah. The women have not used a simulator yet. They are they will. They want to, but they are chomping at the bit to get out and actually shoot live fire on the range. So I'm gonna let them do that for a few nights and then I'll probably bring in a helper and I'll probably cycle some of them in to use it and kind of cycle them in and out. If that makes any sense. It does. I can't have the whole class sitting in there. Yeah, because so I mean, that we'd all get high off propane. Yeah. It, it just vented a little bit. It'll be <laughs> Nobody all right. light a match. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool simulator though. Oh, you know, it it is it is it is pretty cool. So I we're gonna have fun when they get out and they do the shooting portion. They're gonna be pretty I think they're gonna be pretty well equipped by the time the summer's over. Because this is things running clear through November. Do do they at some point get to do the Sims Sims rounds too? I think we're gonna we we are gonna work into that. It's gonna be uh, a little later, right? We need to work on some actual shooting. Yeah. And um I think uh We've talked about actually not instead of like Sims possibly using that, but uh, at the very least airsoft 
And they, so now they know if someone grabs them, they know how to get away. They we're teaching them how to create distance and get to their firearm. And so we're thinking about, about giving them some airsoft and having them do that, get to their firearm and then take shots. Oh, so we're adding a little bit of a little bit of uh you know just a little more dynamic, a little yeah. more depth to it, more more realistic. Yeah, which I think will be that'll be fun. Lot, lots of fun. They, last week they learned how to uh, apply tourniquet. Oh really? Yeah, we did. James came and did an awesome demonstration on on how to apply tourniquets and do some medical stuff and and how to like pack a, a you know like a wound and all kinds of stuff. It was. So you're going into a lot of depth in that class. Yeah, I, I got them all summer. Nice, that's M- nice. Might as well, might as well learn it, right? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that's freaking ton of fun. So let me ask you a question right now. Now that you've got this can, that's a big old long freaking gun. Where do you plan on carrying that thing? And how many rounds do you got to get through it before you carry it? Uh, I'd like to get three or four hundred rounds through it before I start to carry it. Bring your ammo; I'll help you. We'll, just I, get, we'll uh, get it done in like ten minutes. I know. We, I, I was able to replace the fifty rounds we shot yesterday. Sweet today, yeah, at a reasonable price too. Even very nice. Yeah, but I'd like to put you know several hundred rounds through it just so I can see what's going to feed the best, what's going to cycle right. it. Um, I shot some of the self defense rounds that I plan on carrying uh, the plus P's. Right, and those seem to cycle pretty well. So I, I want to shoot more of those through it also. Um, but I usually, I, I carry on the hip. I'm, I'm too big of a guy to carry a pendix. Well, what's the barrel length on that sucker? It's long. It's, is what that, is, is it a four, a little over four, it's four a, and a quarter? I think it's four and a quarter. Holy cow. Can you imagine appendix carrying? Oh no. Appendix carrying a four. I'd try it. I, well, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd try it, man. I would <laughs> I'm not it. built for that. So you carry what about three o'clock? Yeah. Okay. That thing was long. It is. And, and I and I have another holster that it mostly fits into just to see. Right. And it's it's not it's not horrible. I've got a Dremel tool. We could shorten that barrel for you. Yeah, I thought about it. I just got a I got a thin cut. I'll just cut it right off. It'll be all there right. There you go. That'd be sweet. <laughs> well, I'm cool. I'd be anxious for you to. Uh, so you you're going from you're going for your what's your normal everyday carry gun? Uh, typically, I carry a Smith and Wesson shield. The shield. Oh, yeah. God, I hate those guns. <sighs> Is it's, it a is it a it's is it's the first version or I mean is it like the like the like the first version of that or is it the uh, no, 2.0 it's, it's the 2.0 2.0 that's the yeah. have, now have you but seen, I'm going to I'm going to break your heart though what it's 45 I had one of those it's, so have you seen the new the the shield plus yes I actually uh picked one up and played with it at the gun show on uh last weekend yeah and it was nice double stack 9 millimeter. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. So I forgot. James James is a big guy too. And he appendix carries a five inch nineteen eleven. Holy smokes. Yeah, with the red dot. With a red dot? You can do this. You can do this, Paul. What what kind of holster is he using? A fancy appendix carry holster. Like that one that you have that has the wedge and everything in it. Has the dick foam on it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it's, it's not that exact holster. Uh, I'm sure if he's listening here, he'll he'll let us know. Uh, he's got a nice tricked out P30 if you want it. <laughs> it's a nice gun. Is but it? It's got a freaking safety. He he told me about. It. I think he kind of wanted me to buy it, but I'm like, uh, I don't know. It's yeah. got a freaking safety on it. And, I, and I've gotten away from anything yeah. that has safeties on it. Yes, don't it, safeties are slow. Yeah, it's just one more thing that you have to operate. Well, James is pretty awesome because he was. I was teaching him some of that shooting stuff with his 1911s, right? He he watched the video of it. Um, oh, uh, <laughs> yo, I erased that comment, James. I, I was going to say, you better delete that one. I'm deleting that comment. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, oh, he, he was he was gripping high like we talked about, uh-huh. and he kept hitting that safety, kept putting the safety on. Uh, Went home about two hours later. He said, <laughs> about two hours later, he says, because I fixed the safety. <laughs> couldn't ground it down and made it a low profile safety <laughs> so one of the things that i was noticing like i, I was dry, i was dry firing that canic and it comes with bigger um mag release buttons to put on there uh-huh and when i was trying to do dry fire drills i kept dumping the mag out of there and so i had to take it off and do, did some adjusting on it already right but and even in the holster like i'd have it in the holster and it would pop the mag out 
the 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 canic mm-hmm. oh. because that but i got it trimmed down and someone it's needs good. to start making holsters that you know i know that's someone that's, needs to get his shit together i know i would it be nice if somebody would buy a bunch of stuff and start making those custom holsters yeah i know so, <laughs> so, so you see what I did? <laughs> yeah. we had to do a little modifications on the on the comments <laughs> i did that for james that's funny <laughs> I'm horrible like that. No, but. that's so funny. So is there anything else that we should bring up, sir? Kind of fly by the seat of our... Well, I, I'll be honest with you. 98% of our shows are fly by the seat of our pants. Oh, absolutely. Bit. I've listened. I, I know. <laughs> they all sound good. They're just... Sometimes we just kind of... It's a up. lot of fun. We stab around at things. Yeah. I can't think of anything else that's important that's right now. Safeties are for master shooters. <laughs> I am far from a master shooter. Or guys, so, or guys that are just stuck on 1911s. <laughs> Jeez, I, I have heard about some of his modifications for his 1911s, though. Yeah, yeah, he's he's, I don't, he, he's good as night. His 1911s are pretty cool. He, I, I don't know that I could take a Dremel to a gun that's that expensive, though. Oh, he doesn't care. I couldn't do it. He's got a whole set of them. We named them the Blasphemies. <laughs> yes, because they've all been modified. They've all been modified by James. They're awesome. Well, hey, as long as they don't jam, I guess. No, right? they do not. He does not allow that. And that's to perfect. Happen. So, okay. Well, I think we'll go ahead and just close this out. I need to go inside and actually eat some real food. Eat some real food. Hey, it's fr- Wash it food. down with some kombucha. Oh, this is my fresh home brew today, buddy. Oh, look, look at all the stuff on the bottom. Yeah, that doesn't look appetizing at all. Oh, that's that's good stuff right there. Look at it's going to fall down there. No, oh, thanks. I'll pass. It's called, it's called Scoby. Uh, <laughs> do you want some? No, I've got my power aid over here. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyhow, no one called. No one tuned in to hear about freaking kombucha. Right. We're losing. We're losing. Losing viewers. We're losing viewers. Uh, but hey, if you uh, watch this, fantastic! I really appreciate. Rotted we're up water. to rotted water, pretty much. <laughs> we are up to a hundred and two subscribers. Yes, I'm a I'm a muddy water. Yes, <laughs> um, we are a little. Uh, we're we're growing. Yes, I try. I try to share it as often. We as possible. grew by we grew by two subscribers. We hit a hundred because of Alex's wife the other day. Oh, nice! And now we grew two more. And so, uh, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> if you grow by two every week, we're good to go. That's right. That's right. So That'd I could share this on your social media. Share this. Amanda loves kombucha. Kombucha is my. I love it. I drink like three a day, dude. It's freaking awesome. Oh, no, thanks. So anyhow, is share this on your social media. Share the YouTube live. And if you listen to the podcast, which will be uploaded tomorrow, you can share a link to that. You can find the podcast on Spotify. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it on Stitcher. Anywhere that you can find podcasts, you can find the Patriot Defense Podcast. And I will say this on YouTube live. <laughs> on <laughs> on on YouTube live you'll find this video but also on the, our YouTube channel you actually will find um uh the uh, there's an, just an audio version that goes there yes so you can find both of them i don't know i guess you, maybe you, maybe you do, people don't want to look at us maybe maybe i'm revolting maybe 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 i need to start wearing a mask <laughs> Social distancing too. So, yeah, but if you listen, I uh, it, I do have two VP nines. I do two of them, and I only shoot one. <laughs> the second but, one's nice though too. I like that. It is. It looks looks sexy. I like red, that red trigger. Looks sexy with that red trigger. It really does. But thanks for listening. I do appreciate it. Now, if you want to get a hold of me, you want to be on the show. I'm always taking. Paul didn't realize he wanted to be on the show till I called him or texted him this morning. Yeah. And early too early yes I, you're up early I anywhere. Was, I was i don't freaking care you text me during the week at like five o'clock <laughs> so uh get a hold of me you can call me you can text me area code 620-794-6223 that's area code 620-794-6223 i'd love to talk to you the gal called me yesterday she's going to be in one of my classes and she was just randomly poking around online and she found she found our last podcast on uh, on YouTube. Oh, nice! And she's like, "This guy sounds familiar. I know this guy." <laughs> and so she she called me, super excited, told me that she was watching me on YouTube Live. So I thought that was pretty cool. Was that Mo? That was not Mo. Mo was scheduled to come on today, actually. Oh, was she? But it's Easter weekend, and I kind of forgot about that. She uh... was busy, so we're gonna get Mo on here in a couple weeks. We're gonna reschedule, and uh, yeah. So Mo, what I did is I went ahead and I called Paul because I knew Paul would be okay coming on. <laughs> 
dedication. I'm not going to try that accent again. I don't think she liked it. No, oh, no. <laughs> Didn't she say there was a fighting words or something like that? Yeah, she posted all kinds of stuff up she, on Yes, she did. Lying about me. <laughs> that, that was kind of rude, Mo. That was really rude, and I didn't appreciate it. I thought it was funny. Until then, look at that. We just milked out another five minutes. Oh, just talking okay. nothing. <laughs> so I think we are good to go, and uh, I think that uh, I'll be back. I've got a class, actually, this, this coming Saturday, but I plan on doing it again Saturday night. Uh, I feel up to it. I'll do it. You'll do it. I'll, I'll get, I always freaking do it. Yeah. And it, sometimes the class ones are great. Cause I get to decompress and I either sound like I'm just really tired or I'm just amped up. Just depending on what happened in class that day. So until then, thank you for listening. Share it with your friends. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great week and everyone have a great Easter tomorrow. Hopefully you're going to spend it, spend some time with family. Enjoy it. Um, uh, do whatever it is you do. If you get a chance and the weather's nice where you live at, you should go shoot. Absolutely. Take the family out and shoot for Easter. It's really fun to shoot hard boiled eggs, by the way. That's something I haven't tried. We should do it. Absolutely. I've got like 12 dozen eggs in my fridge, but okay, we're out of here. We'll let you guys go. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Joining us on YouTube live guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, our views actually at one time, the, the numbers are starting to go up and uh, I really do appreciate you joining me and I really enjoy uh, the comments. So I will see you guys in a week.